Hello, my name is Reinder de Vlaming, and I'm very proud to present you here today on the faculty research dates. Um, I'm actually now finalizing my PhD and the last years I've worked on a sustainable feed protein uh, production on agricultural effluents using duckweed. This is actually a perfect collaboration between um, my two promoters, Mia Eckhout, who is specialized in feed and food technology, and Professor Erik Meers, who is specialized in nutrient recovery in agriculture. And I will represent the group of Erik Meers today. And he is um, situated here in this infographic on the green side. And they are specialized in the recovery of nitrogen uh, within agriculture or the biochemical sphere. The key tool that we use are elemental analyzers of, for example, nitrogen, phosphor, and other inorganic elements. And this is done to qualify the photoremediation potential or the nutrient recovery potential of a system or a process. And then, for example, also um, the recovered nutrients like from air scrubbers or digest state are uh, tested for their fertilizer properties. And then finally, we also upcycle nitrogen and phosphorus and other elements from waste streams towards proteins using duckweed and algae. And with this, we have gathered uh, knowledge on a pilot scale with uh, several figures you see here below, like for example, for constructed wetlands, or uh, digesters. Well, my PhD was focused on this specific problem of the livestock production where there is a big dependency on an import of um, soybean. And the soybean is also linked with the high uh, greenhouse gas emission. Um, and the the feed of uh, the feed that animal ingests uh, will also convert into manure, which is highly loaded with nitrogen and phosphorus. And there's a big need to replace these imported soybean meals, but also to recover the nutrients from these waste streams. And this can be done with, for example, duckweed. Um, but why do we use duckweed? Well, first of all, it's an indigenous plant that you can find here in pond ditches and canals and it has an extreme uh, fast productivity. It actually uh, grows or proliferates uh, vegetatively by, um, uh, by uh, separating itself into two, and uh, the a cycle is performed within days. This gives it a high production potential, but also the biomass which is produced is valuable. Um, especially the high protein content is of, uh, of interest uh, and it amounts between 30 to 45 percent protein on dry matter. Furthermore, it's completely edible and there have been done trials with a positive results uh, towards feed application. However, there is a high water content. But uh, we wanted to validate this system also in a in a Flemish context, we're using also a real life uh, waste stream being the, uh, the liquid fraction and the biological effluent of manure, pig manure treatment. And what we have done is actually we characterize the effluent that goes into the system and goes out. And we also see what uh, is volatilized and sedimentated and also what uh, which fractions are taken up by the duckweed and thus recovered. And in our experiments, we saw, for example, that there is indeed a high protein product, uh, production of 3.5 ton per hectare per year, which is three times this, uh, the productivity of soybean. Uh, furthermore, the quality of the amino acids are high, and we validated that there is a nutrient removal and nutrient recovery present in our systems. But there is also more novel research on the mineral composition. This is uh, generally overlooked in literature. Um, manganese, zinc and iron, for example, are all elements which are required within a certain limit uh, in, in pig feed. And there's a range of an optimal level. And we see that, for example, with the duckweed, we tested that there is a higher uh, concentration. So it can be considered a source of these three elements. But safety should be guaranteed. And therefore, it's also checked if, for example, the arsenic, cadmium, and lead concentrations are not higher than the legal limits um, described in the directive presented here. And we see that this was the case in our experiment. 
However, they still need to validate also other hazards, like for example, the microbiological uh, uh, contaminants and pathogens and viruses. And this is done in other research groups. Um, however, we have focused, uh, focused on the nutritional and uh, nutritional and the production qualities of duckweed here in the current system. Uh, but at the end of our experiments, we still have a plant which has a very high water content and there's still a big need to see what we do with this after harvest and how do we feed this to the animals. And this is something that Professor Mia Eckhout can help with or investigates. So thank you for your attention and I'll give the floor to Mia. So thank you, Reinders, for this nice introduction. And uh, welcome to all of you. I'm Mia Eckhout. I'm head of the laboratory of uh, feed technology, and I will guide you through the second part of this presentation. So let's dive into the inclusion of high moisture raw material as ingredients in feed. Just let me tell, me, tell you who we are. I'm from the laboratory of feed technology and we have a lot of things to offer. We are well equipped and we have unit processes on small scale for feed industry as grinding and mixing, pelleting, extrusion technology, vacuum coating, but also a lab well equipped for the physical chemical analysis of produced products, so quality control. The scope of our research is multiple as uh, we are uh, investigating new ingredients and new diets. Also, we uh, are doing in, uh, research on the impact of process parameters on the end product, and we are uh, studying the recovery of bioactive components after processing. And this is a glance of our technological and uh, analytical equipment. Okay, time is too short to mention all uh, the wet streams and new alternative uh, feed ingredients which uh, can be used. There is duckweed, there are insects, algae and so on, but also some uh, side products or co-products, side streams from food industry as there are potato peels, for example. Um, in the corner, corner you see the Belgian uh, fries, uh, and we are well known in Belgium for those fries production, but with um, a huge economic expansion of those uh, production, uh, we also see there is a very big availability of uh, potato peels or potato waste streams, which are asking to uh, get valorized. And one of the options is to introduce them in animal uh, feed. But it's quite challenging. As said, those products have a high moisture content. And um, yeah, it's uh, normally not those things we expect in feed industry. If we are looking for solutions, we have to mention that there are multiple solutions. If we consider duckweed or those potato peels or algae, uh, then uh, uh, we might think that there are different options to get them uh, to uh, the animal. So one of the options to introduce uh, duckweed or other wet uh, side streams into animal feed is by ensiling. Now, ensiling is an expertise we don't cover in our feed laboratory. Uh, it's covered by a uh, colleague uh, Geert Hazard from the Department of Crops and Plants. He is well equipped with those uh, micro silages uh, to study uh, all changing parameters. We did some research over there uh, on ensiling of uh, duckweed, where we see, for example, that uh, duckweed uh, results in the formation of butyric and acetic uh, acid, as well as uh, ethanol, resulting in silages of bad quality. So indeed, uh, there is uh, research necessary to go to optimization. 
Another uh, possibility is through the feeding of liquid feed, for example, for pigs. Uh, but also there, we can do a lot of things in the laboratory, and we already see there that then we have to do more research on mixing efficiency and stability of the mixes uh, to get them mixed and homogeneous uh, to the animal. And the third option is to produce compound feed and uh, to consider the wet streams as a compound feed ingredient, producing, for example, a feed pellet or an extra date for a variety of animals. Now, let me just focus on animal feed production, compound feed production. And in this uh, slide, you see uh, a complete overview of the production steps, and I will not go into detail. But the import, most important thing uh, to, to tell you that is that at the left upper side, you see the raw material as cereals, grains, seeds, and so on. And the most um, general uh, characteristic of those raw material is that they are dry. But if we think about indeed duckweed or potato peels, those components are wet. Wet means they have a, a moisture content which may exceed 90% uh, of moisture. On the other hand, the dry material have 85 to 90% of dry material, dry matter. Okay. The yellow arrow shows that uh, it's another point of entrance for those wet streams. We can't uh, put them uh, together with our dry products in uh, the same um, yes entrance or or starting of the of the pro of the uh, process. We have to add them on uh, other points. For example, here at the start of uh, the mixing. So, okay, uh, our research will result into practical solutions. For example, we will find or determine the characteristics of pumps which you could use to uh, pump those products into your mixing devices. And the products are, have a high viscosity and the pumps have to uh, meet the correct capacity which should meet the mixing capacity. On the other hand, there will be an impact of an inclusion of a certain percentage of those wet ingredients into the process, as well as on process parameters, as well as on product quality. So it's important for us to determine together with our clients what could be the maximum inclusion. Next we have to do some research on the effect of different production systems. In feed, for example, we have palletizing, we have expanders, we have compactors, we have long-term conditioning and so on. So we will do research on the effect of those expander treatment, for example, on the percentage of inclusion and on the quality of the product. And another thing, for example, could be the homogeneity. We can do research on mixing performance and homogeneity of the mentioned projects. Of course, after all the research, it's important to know what are the benefits and costs of the inclusion of those wet ingredients. It's important to know before we go over to investments, for example, in industry. And then the most important is whenever those components are introduced, what is the effect on the animal performance? Therefore, we have collaborations with the team of the Department of Animal Science, where they are well equipped and organized to do animal trials to consider what is the effect of all those ingredients on health, feed ratio, feed conversion ratio, and so on. I hope that I have shown you that the inclusion of high moisture raw materials as ingredients in the animal feed is challenging, that the research we do is demand-driven and in close collaboration with industry. Thank you for your attention. If there are any questions, I will be happy to answer them.